Now to the Georgia kindergarten teacher who was recently found not guilty on 22 child abuse charges. Tanya Kraft has been cleared of any wrongdoing, but she still is allowed only sporadic visits with her two children and worries she'll never get her life back. We're going to talk to her live in just a moment. She's here in the studio with us. But first, Steve Osinsami has a look back at how we got to this point. Not guilty. Since she was acquitted three weeks ago, Tanya Kraft says she spent quite a bit of time at the gym in her garage working through her frustrations. I had a room that I would go to and cry, and then this is kind of my room to go and just relieve every frustration. This 37-year-old former kindergarten teacher and mother of two says she's still recovering from charges that she sexually molested her own young daughter and two of her former students at sleepovers that took place at her Georgia home. In court, the father of one of the students seemed so certain. She stopped everything she did and looked me dead in the eye and said, I know it did, Daddy. She's now suing the parents of the children who accused her, along with her ex-husband, the sheriff, and other county workers who she says repeatedly and suggestively questioned the children until they believed she had touched them. She's also suing for full custody of her two children. The state took them away two years ago when she was first accused. She said all along, I'm fighting for my children. And it, that's, that's the key. She told us she remembers the day her family was torn apart. It began with a ring at the door and a detective waiting outside. Even now, the sound of a doorbell still gives her pause. My friends know to call and to not ring the door because the doorbell just takes me back. It affects me greatly if the doorbell rings. Kraft has now moved to Tennessee. She has rooms waiting for her two children. She hopes her family can start over. For Good Morning America, Steve Osinsami, ABC News, Saudi Daisy, Tennessee. Tanya Kraft has filed a federal civil rights lawsuit and is now fighting to get her reputation back. She joins us now with her attorney, Demothenis Larondos. Thank you both for being here with us this morning. I see, Tanya, that you have a pendant with your two children. What, they're 8 and 11 now? 8 and 11 in a few days. In yes, a few days. Yes, uh, when's the last time you had a chance to, to see them? Um, there, there have been some recent visits, very mm -hmm. short and, and very sporadic, but um, every second is cherished. So I'm sure that it is. Uh, originally, you said that you were not going to file, you had no intention of filing a lawsuit. Uh, what has made you change your mind? Um, I'm, I'm not sure. I, I, had a, I guess I hadn't even thought mm -hmm. past the point of the trial. Um, the lawsuit is, is set in place to hold people accountable for these false allegations for this to not happen again and as the lawsuit states to make some major changes in the Lookout Mountain judicial system in Catoosa County specifically to where this does not happen to any other children or any other um, individuals accused of, of this falsely. Mm -hmm. And that, that is your motivation. I know there's some people when they see it's for $25 million, they sometimes will question right. um, your motives for that. But you're saying it's because you want to just right the wrong system. Absolutely. And I've always made choices based on what needs to happen, not what people are going to think about or what they're going to say. And there needs to be some major changes. And um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to stick to that for a long yeah. time. Dr. LaRondo, uh, unfortunately, there have been other cases like this where people have been falsely accused of uh, this type of crime. And you've worked on, on similar cases? Yes, I, I write for West Group about these cases. I teach for NACDL about these cases. Uh, Tanya showed up at my door a couple of years ago and wouldn't take no for an answer, insisted I come down and lead her trial team with uh, Clancy Covert in Tennessee and the Kings in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. And it was a tough row to hoe to save her from these terrible allegations. And she's filed the federal lawsuit so that she can get the federal court to step in and stop them from doing this in North Georgia to other families. Um, and in, short of filing a federal lawsuit, there's no other way to stop them. So that's the primary reason behind the federal lawsuit. And also, she owes her family a ton of money that she, for, for her defense that she'd like to recoup. About like half a million dollars, your family, your, your father had to go into his retirement funds and and such. So I know it's put a, an immense financial strain uh, on your family. It, I cannot imagine, and you've talked about this, uh, uh, among those accusing you, your own daughter, and to hear her in court uh, saying the things 
that she said, how, how do you get past that? Um, well, I think you get past it as a mother, that you unconditionally love your child. Um, you realize I have seen with all the evidence that we have seen and the progression of what happened, that it's, um, she either has memories falsely that have been implanted or she's been manipulated, but it's not her fault. And I don't blame her or any of the children because um, they're a victim as much as I am. We had an expert on here, uh, Michael Wellner, who's been on our program from time to time. And during the course of your trial, we, talk about, we talked about false memories, about how there are sometimes people who, and there are a lot of good people who work with children, a lot of good people who, who help in this case. Um, but there are some that they implant these images, and it's difficult, very difficult. And I know it's really torn apart uh, the town, and you're no longer living there or <coughs> teaching any longer. No, ma'am have no desire to go back to teaching. No, ma'am. They can implant these false ideas without intending to. Uh, right. That's why we brought Bill Burnett from Vanderbilt and Nancy Aldridge from uh, Georgia to explain to the jury how this can happen even when you don't intend it to. And, mm -hmm. that's, and until Tanya gets the federal judge to say, uh-uh, no more of this incompetent interviewing, it's going to keep happening. And again, that is the focus of this lawsuit. Yes, it is. And trying to do that, and only can imagine for you, Tanya. You know, there's some people, even watching this morning, that are going to, they're going to think what they want to think, as you said earlier, and believe that you are, you're guilty. Absolutely, and I, I understand that. And before this, and before the research I had done, um, we have misconceptions about allegations. If someone is charged, if someone is indicted, mm -hmm. but I do plan on fighting for children. I plan on up to the federal level making some, hoping to change some laws to where people that do interview and investigate have to be qualified and have the qualifications to do the job that they're doing. Well, Tanya, thank you very much for your willingness to come forward and talk to you. And I know you very much want to be with your son for his 11th birthday that is coming up. Yes, ma'am. So thank, thank you. you. Thanks, Robin. Thank you. thank you very much. Thank you. And you can go to our, our shout-out board at abcnews.com.